Hi everybody, welcome to Photo Finds for November 11th, 2014. I am your host, Nick Russo. Thanks so much for stopping by this week. Let's go ahead and get started at the entrance of the Magic Kingdom. We're looking at some brand new holiday decorations. These just went up in the beginning of November, this month. So we have some garland lining the railway station as well as some um, new floral design up in the front. It's a closer look up at that. And that also remains true up in the archways heading actually into the park through the entrance tunnels there. As we actually get into Main Street, just taking a look up at the the lamp poles, some garland and bells and things like that up here. And there is the uh, backside of the Walt Disney World Railway Station. Just a couple of weeks ago, this is where the Scarecrows would have been for Mickey's Not So Scary. They were replaced by toy soldiers and candy canes. And here's a close-up look on some of the trees that you'll see uh, on Main Street. Some toy cars and pine cones and some fruits and things like that are the ornaments. Here's a look at City Hall, that same garland and red ribbon theme that you'll see. And here's the candy cane garden. This, if I'm not mistaken, is where you can go and meet Santa Claus. In the background there, they have a countdown until Christmas. Some more toy soldiers in the background and candy canes as well. And there's the sign, the candy cane garden. Taking a look at some of the storefronts as you go down uh, the actual main street. On our way down Main Street, we spotted the Dapper Dans here, and they got a makeover for the holidays as well. And there's the ice cream parlor. There's a lot of wreaths and a lot of garland. And as we make our way into the hub here, some more of the uh, floral changes are evident. And then around the corner from the hub, this is, I believe, where you can meet Merida from Brave. If I'm not mistaken, this is where you can meet Merida. Now, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong, but uh, I think I'm right. All right, now over to Fantasyland. Uh, Peter Pan's flight has had some construction walls up here in this area previously, but they have come down now, and uh, I believe they're using this area for Fast Pass Plus. All right, leaving Disney, and we're heading over to Universal to see a couple of things. One thing I wanted to point out was, even this late, the Halloween Horror Nights advertisements are still up over here. I'm sure they'll be switched out soon, but I thought it was interesting that, unlike Disney, uh, Universal kind of isn't in too much of a rush to get rid of their uh, traces of the previous holiday. Taking a look up at the advertisement or banner wall over here, uh, we're getting a look here at the cowfish banner. That is new. And we're going to actually take a look inside the cowfish now because it has finally opened up to the public after a long time coming. As you make your way inside the main entrance, they have this kind of smart wall here. It's an interactive screen where you could build a fish. And, uh, you know, that's kind of their whole theme is fish and burgers. So you can build kind of a fun, cute little fish here. And also take a look up at a interactive menu. This is the banner that kind of meets you as you walk in. And then you can either take the stairs up to the second and third floors, or you can take this transparent elevator that looks out onto CityWalk. It's actually a pretty neat elevator. And it brings you up to one of the dining rooms. There are a couple of dining rooms, one on the second floor, one on the third floor. This is the one on the second floor, and this is kind of the larger one. Outside on the main patio, next to one of the bars, they have some games set up. This game, uh, when I was growing up, this game was known to me as Cornhole, um, but they have that set up out here so you can play um, during your meal or after your meal or whatever. They have some additional outdoor seating out on this patio here. There's no bar outside. I previously th thought there would be a bar over in this area, uh, but there's not. There is an outdoor bar, though, that we just saw, and uh, there's another look at it, and it is a full bar. All right, now we're heading up the stairs here. They have a lot of retro-looking artwork, all having to do with uh, fish and sushi and, and and Japanese themes. And we're heading up to the third floor where they have uh, an additional dining room. And this, this dining room is a lot more open, a lot more light comes in through the windows here. And obviously, they have another bar set up here as well. And as you can see in this picture, like I said, there's a lot more light coming in. Taking a look through that uh, glass pane there, that window, you can 
get a look out onto the outdoor seating and the first floor seating. And this is the view that you can get if you sit right up next to one of the windows. Taking a look, you can see emeralds out there in the distance, and then the opposite side, uh, the rising star. So it would probably be a pretty nice place to sit at nighttime for dinner. This is one of the decorations that they have up here. This is really cool to me. Kind of a fishbowl looking thing with, with chopsticks and looks like some pasta in there or something. And then just getting a look at the other side of the main dining room. All right, back out on CityWalk, the NASCAR Sports Grill closed on November 1st. So they have some signs out here, pardon our dust, while we continue our historic Universal CityWalk expansion. So they're not just going to tear down the building. I don't think anybody thought that that was the case, but they are transforming this into something else. No word yet on what it is, but before they just had some chairs blocking off the entrance. Now they have some more permanent blockades. And all of the furniture has come off the patio. I imagine the same is true on the inside, but it is all blocked off with construction drapes. So you cannot see what's going on inside. And the big Jumbotron that you would always see exiting Universal is gone. And that Jumbotron displayed things not only having to do with the NASCAR grill, but kind of Universal advertisements for events and all sorts of things. So uh, they're going to have a little bit less advertising. I don't know how effective that that board was in the first place, but it is gone now. Now, heading into the entrance of Universal, uh, this struck me. I didn't know Fear Factor was still down. I thought Fear Factor would come up right after Universe, uh, Halloween Horror Nights ended, but they're probably just striking the, set, uh, they're striking the set still, so Fear Factor is still out of commission for the time being. Now, we were here to see if there were any new holiday decorations, and the only evident ones that I could find were these garland and wreaths over here by Mel's Diner. So, there's not much going in quite yet. I guess they'll really pick up the pace with their decorations as they get closer to the opening of the Macy's Parade. The last thing I wanted to show you in Universal was these television screens over here in the Macy's building they have advertisements playing on these tv screens now these tv screens were never here before halloween horror nights and for horror nights they were just playing uh false news footage for the purge scare zone so they decided to keep some of these tvs in here and just kind of play universal advertisements which was kind of interesting to me playing universal ads within universal back out to city walk for a moment i wanted to bring your attention to this grinch merchandise booth that they have set up out here Obviously, this is new for the holiday season. The barricades out here are still set up to prevent guests from walking down where the Steve Harvey set was. They did just film Steve Harvey's Universal Week out here on City Walk. A few days ago, they wrapped up and they have striked the set, but you, can't, you still can't walk down the stairs there until they're completely finished. All right, now leaving City Walk and heading over to Hollywood Studios. We were just there last night, so... Let's get a look at some things. Up on the ticket windows, they have replaced the permanent ticket option signs with TV screens. So they jump around from advertisements to the ticket options. Heading into the studios, they have changed their guide maps for the holiday season. So they are advertising for the Osborne family spectacle of dancing lights, which, by the way, is what we're here to see. This is what greets you as you walk on in. Now, if you have been to the Spectacle of Lights before, none of this is really going to be new to you. Um, but I wanted to cover it nonetheless. They have this pretty awesome sign out here. Of course, the whole event is sponsored by Siemens. Now, I don't know if the Hidden Mickeys were always as prominent as they were this year, but they really... Bring your attention to the Hidden Mickeys with the narration that plays in the area. And they really encourage you to find them. In the narration, they say that there are about 46 or to 50 different Hidden Mickeys. And I can believe it because I saw quite a few myself. Okay, now I want to bring your attention to this cast member here who's carrying around these uh, light-up necklaces. They are in the shape of... Of Christmas lights and a lot of people were interested in buying them so you did see a whole lot of these around they are not interactive like the Mickey ears or anything like that but like I said a lot of people wanted them 
Now, all of the decorations from previous years are returning this year. So like I said, if you have been to the event before, this is nothing new to you. Here's a merchandise stand selling a lot of different frozen merchandise. And like I said, there's those light up necklaces there that were very popular. Another thing that they have going on around the area is constant snow. Obviously, it's not real ice. It's soap or something like that, but it is constantly going, so you can't really walk around there without getting snowed on, which is pretty magical if you ask me. Now, here's one of the big spectacles of the area. This tunnel is really impressive. It's probably one of the more eye-catching elements of the display. And you could just sit there and watch this thing for quite a long time, and we'll get a view of the opposite side of that. They have these giant carousels that are on top of the building, and these things are really cool. This one has to do with angels in this case. All right, now we are on the opposite side of the street where they have a Peace on Earth and Merry Christmas banner set up, and this is also where you can see the overhead angels, and there's quite a bit of them. The close-up look. Now, these pictures don't do the colors justice. These angels are in a very vibrant blue, very royal blue. So if you can get out to this event and see it in person, I highly recommend it. And over here underneath the angels is also where they have the more basic and traditional nativity set. Obviously, no bright colors here. And right behind that is where you can check in if you are attending the holiday premium package um, that is frozen themed. There's the opposite side view of that very impressive tunnel that I was talking about. And this is where which we'll soon see, you can find some of the hidden Easter eggs from the display. Now, they have some more permanent merchandise carts, but they also have these roll-around merchandise carts, and this is where you can buy the interactive Mickey ears as well as some of the new merchandise that interacts with the show. All right, now this line here is the line to meet Goofy as Santa Claus, and a lot of people were taking advantage of that opportunity. And now we are back over here underneath that tunnel and what we're getting a look at here is the Baby Sinclair from the Dinosaurs television show. And this is a Easter egg that they have included for several years now. And he's always kind of in the same place. But what's not in the same place is this purple cat. The story behind this is when the Osbournes uh, were shipping over the lights. Uh, I guess they included a Halloween decoration by accident. And so as an homage to the family and, and, and that story, they include the purple cat in the display each year in a different location. A few more displays over here on the opposite side of the street. I'm not really sure what the story is behind this toy soldier and the grill. Toy soldier wearing the grilling apron. I'm sure there's some story behind it. And of course it wouldn't be complete without Santa Claus flying across the New York skyscrapers at the very end of the display. All right, guys, thank you so much for stopping by this week, this installment of Photo Finds for November 11th, 2014. I'm your host, Nick, and until next week, have fun, guys. Bye.